Hi everyone, I'm John Rennie and welcome to The Boneyard. This episode, I want to talk a little bit about my first reactions to a movie that I have absolutely fallen in love with. Valley Girl is a 1983 romantic comedy film that immediately stood out to me as being a cut above the rest when it comes to the niche that is teen movies set in 1980s subculture movies. Oh, I'm sure. It's okay, I guess. Damn, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you know, he makes my mouth water. No. On first viewing, I would happily include Valley Girl amongst the classics, such as Penelope Spheris' equally great drama Suburbia, though Valley Girl is not as hard-edged and is closer to say something like Cameron Crowe say anything, and of course it's a little bit like other great teen movies from John Hughes, such as Some Kind of Wonderful, The Breakfast Club and Uncle Buck. Well, well, well. They certainly are scraping the bottom of the barrel for cheerleaders these days. <laughs> they all deal with the teen subcultures, such as new romantics, goth-influenced fashion trends, alternatives, and punks. If you are a fan of any of these movies, Valley Girl will be right up your street. That chick Julie, she's truly dazzling. Just in case you don't know about the Valley Girl subculture, here are some excerpts I found in my research from an old news broadcast about the teenage culture at the time upon which the film was based. And now as Terry Drinkwater reports, there is a new outbreak of Americanisms and it may be spreading. Like tubular. Well, it's like a totally great day. It's like totally awesome. Gag me with a spoon. Get your chin way out there and pronounce everything so that it sounds as if you've got marbles in your mouth, okay? It's grody to the max. That means it's disgusting. It's totally grody. As you can see, the Valley Girl and alternative subcultures have a great use of slang and fashion sense. And this just lends itself really well to cinematic storytelling with the teenagers gossiping in the mall, in their cars and at parties. And some of the dialogue in this movie is absolutely to die for. Yeah, but Tommy could be such a dork, you know? Like, he's got the vibe, but his brains are bad news. The movie was directed by Martha Coolidge and stars a young Nicolas Cage as a moody alternative teen named Randy, alongside Deborah Foreman's Julie, who is the film's valley girl of the title. The film's director Coolidge was relatively unknown at the time, and after, she would go on to make the early Val Kilmer classic Real Genius and the great comedy Lost in Yonkers. Her later career has been amazing, and she's worked on Sex and the City and countless other classic independent movies and TV shows. And here, her expert direction shows off the valley and makes the neon lit strip streets of the city and clubs look beautiful. Valley Girl has an emotional reality and authenticity that I think shows that the filmmakers really wanted to tell a genuine romance story. And while the moments of comedy in the movie work really well, the drama is potent because of the great performances from the cast. Nicolas Cage is a really handsome, cool guy, but in this movie, he looks cool but unconventional, and that works to appeal to a guy like me, who was kind of an outsider as a teenager, even as a grown-up. You. You get out of here, you Cage, even this early in his career, has that original, fresh style that sets him apart from other actors, and that aligns perfectly with Coolidge's desire to avoid a stereotypical leading man and tell a relatable story. It's a great early Cage performance and well worth a watch just for that alone. Well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I should also give special mention to the actors Frederick Forrest and Colin Camp, who play the fantastic stoner ex-hippie parents of Julie. We have been worried sick about you. Where have you been that you'd have to stay out all night? Wait, I don't think I want to hear this. As each scene they are in together light up the screen and their performances are heartfelt too but also comedic genius. God, why don't you just punish me like Stacy's parents do? Bad karma, dear. If you've ever been a teenager dealing with your parents, I think like me, you'll really relate to this part of the movie for sure. Randy, this is my dad. Steve Richmond. What's happening, man? How's it going? Foreign, how, how you doing? Great. I was amazed to learn that actress Colin Camp was only 26 years old and me a few years older than the actress playing her daughter. You know, Julie, we were young once. Your mother still is. We understand. This isn't the 
age of Aquarius, you know. Uh, what did it were? The movie is filled with excellent performances from the other Valley Girls, and it has an amazing supporting cast. You know, like, oh, I get so fat and all, and what happened to my zits and get so dirty? <laughs> it's no great leap of the imagination to see that this movie offers a modern twist on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and the writers and filmmakers freely admit this. And that's cool, because this is a classic story, where the boy and the girl meet at a valley party and fall for each other, but one is a punk and the other is a valley girl, whose friends all tell her that Randy just isn't right for her social status. Now f off for sure, like totally. This sets up the story, and the rest plays out as a genuinely heartfelt teen romance. Nobody is gonna tell me who I can score with. I want this chick, she wants me, so f it, we're going back. Reading about it, I found that Valley Girl became a sleeper hit in 1983 and incredibly grossed over $17 million at the box office against a very low budget of $350,000, which shows Coolidge's expert direction. The critical reception was mixed, but famous critic Roger Ebert praised Martha Coolidge's direction and said that the film succeeds in bringing together two American cultures in ways that felt both entertaining and authentic because of the sharp, witty dialogue and strong performances from Cage and Deborah Foreman. I could see anybody I want to, okay? I'm sorry, I, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Other critics argued that the film's plot was formulaic and its characters were too stereotypical, but hey guys, lighten up. That's kind of the whole point here, it's Romeo and Juliet. However, even among its haters, there was an acknowledgement of its cultural importance even at the time, and that it had a catchy and memorable soundtrack. Oh I like God. this song. I hate this song. I hate this music. Watching other reviews from the past and more recent re-evaluations here on YouTube, it seems that Valley Girl is pretty much praised by everyone for its nostalgic value, but also for its influence on the genre, teen comedies. It seems to have paved the way for other similar movies, like the ones I mentioned earlier, that show emotional, funny, but genuine portrayals of teenage life in cinema. To Julie, his favorite valley girl, Randy sends his undying love and says, like, come back soon, you know? The film is also significant as it set the stage for actor Nicolas Cage's career to come and showed very early on in his third movie that he was a versatile, I would say unconventional, and great actor. It was also the first movie where he used his stage name Nicholas Cage. So to sum up, The Boneyard wholeheartedly recommends Valley Girl not only for being a significant piece of 1980s cinema, but because of its genuine portrayal of teenage romance. So if you're into 80s teen comedies and have yet to see it, it's a must see. He's hot! Oh yeah, he's my kind of guy. Aren't they all? <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more from me, please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this classic teen movie in the comments below. And as always, thank you all so much for listening.